ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਟੁਡੇਜ਼ ਐਡੀਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਆਮ ਹਰਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਤੂਰ ਮੇਰੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਨੂੰ ਪਿਆਰ ਭਰੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਨਮਸਕਾਰ ਅਦਾਬ ਐਂਡ ਸ਼ਲੋਮ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਆਈ ਗੋ ਇਨ ਟੂ ਟੁਡੇ ਸ਼ੋ देयर ਆਰ ਟੂ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਵਿਚ ਆਈ ਜਸਟ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਵਿਦ ਯੂ ਇੱਕ ਤਾਂ ਵੀ ਨੋ ਇਟਸ ਰੀਲੀ ਕੋਲਡ ਆਊਟਸਾਈਡ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲੀ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਬੇਸਿਕਲੀ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਹੋਲ ਯੂ ਐਸ ਬਟ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਨਾਰਥ ਇਟਸ ਰੀਲੀ ਕ੍ਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਪਲੀਜ਼ 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 ਟੇਕ ਕੇਅਰ ਆਫ ਯੂਰ ਸੈਲਫ I was just reading the news about 18 people 18 ਬੰਦਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਮੌਤ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ just because it is too cold out there ਤੇ so we need to take care of uh, ourselves because uh, if we don't then who is going to do it uh, so be careful put on extra layers of the clothes doesn't matter what you do if you don't have to go out do not go out number 1 number 2 uh the other thing which is happening which i want to talk about is um probably down the road main is it te gal karanga ki ek saadi community de vich mera khayal hai sari community de vich eh hunda hai ga ek na we create a bubble aur us bubble de vich assi rehne di aadat ban jandi hai ya te us bubble de vichon bahar kidan nikalna kidan assi agge ja ke kuch karna hai ga that is something which we need to uh, i think i personally believe ke I need to talk about it. And uh, today actually we are going to talk about uh, the uh, the upcoming election. Uh yes, we have uh, a plethora of uh, Democrats uh, who are going to run uh, for the president. We will not know till actually uh, probably by April of two- 2020 who will be the front runner. Right now we have about 7 or 8 of them Cory Booker from New New Jersey New York uh, the senator from New Jersey he announced today that he will be another candidate Bernie Sanders is looking at it we have Elizabeth Warren we have Harris Kamala Harris we have um, Joe Biden looking at it we have Jilly Brand uh, the senator from New York so we will see and even on republican side even though the sitting president is not challenged but there is a chatter going on that somebody may challenge uh, donald trump but we'll talk as we go along but today we are going to talk about a very important election which is going to happen right here in uh, uh, queens in new york it is about the district attorney uh, the primary actually is set for november the 5th <coughs> i mean voting is for november the 5th and primary is going to happen sometime in uh june uh 26 i think is the primary date so the role what the what is the role of the district attorney in the counties because a lot of us uh, we can whether you are dealing with the speeding tickets and if goes into nasty fight with somebody it ends up into the da's office um we're going to talk about that and that how the new da uh, how they can actually change or make the adjustments into the existing policies to implement so that the people sometime get into something which they should not be in the first place but they end up being there and then they don't know how to get it out get out of that and uh, you sometime end up getting a da who is uh, you know whose intent is just to hang you up that's it period doesn't matter what like old western style justice uh, things if i may say uh, but the th- time is changing so we are going to talk about that and to discuss that i have a very good friend of mine but he is also an attorney uh, who also was a city councilman for new york city at one time and we are going to discuss about it uh, thanks uh, mr como anthony como thanks thank, for coming in thank you mr to hapri thank you for having me well uh, you heard me in the opening remarks uh, let's talk about first the perspective of the job of the da district attorney yeah. well look uh, i was proud to be in the city council but i always say i um, was even prouder to be a uh, assistant district attorney a prosecutor in queens So being born and raised and living in Queens like yourself I pre uh, for my entire life pretty much up until last year um you obviously know the area you know the ins and outs of the community so being a prosecutor uh for the county I grew up in and was born in was an honor and you basically your role or everyone thinks your role is to 
put people behind bars, and that's not correct. The role of a prosecutor is to make sure justice is served. Because today, and whether it's today, weeks ago, months ago, or even into the future, as we're going to see in the coming months and years ahead, the prosecutor, whether it's the district attorney all the way down to the assistant district attorneys, their job is to do justice, whether it is from considering reform that has to take place, whether it's doing your due diligence and investigation and saying this, this, this is a mistake, this, was, this person's not guilty, and releasing them and dismissing charges to, up, you know, obviously prosecuting someone who has committed a crime and, if necessary, you know, finding the just punishment. By that I mean there's not automatically, a, you know, uh, a person deserves to go to jail. Uh, you know, we've all been, you know, made stupid mistakes in our lives. And oh, yeah, we do. We sometimes, it's, uh, you even don't know, but uh, you, out yep. of fun you do something, and, yep. but so for somebody else it may be like, oh, you stepped into my territory. Exactly. And so all that has to be taken into, a fa into a fa uh, consideration in doing that. So that's the role of a prosecutor. Now, again, what does that mean? Justice is very broad and, 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 you know, there's many interpretations. You may have your own interpretation as far as I may have, but that's the real role. You have to take the facts and take the evidence and take the information that's presented to you because the law enforcement, you are one of the top law enforcement officials in the county. The DA is the head chief law enforcement officer in the county. Assistant district attorneys are higher up in the legal food chain, what I like to call it, than the police department. <laughs> because the law enforcement, the police department, or whatever enforcement agency ha may have the power to arrest you, but after a certain period of time, they, ca they have to, the district attorney has to charge you. If you're not charged, then you're gonna be, legally have to be released. And that's where you know, the DA's office is, is an important role in in not only obviously in Queens County, but in society in, as well. In, in any county, the DA's role basically yeah. uh, plays like that. Sometimes, uh, you know, because I, I just want to make the people understand that how it works. Sometimes what happens is uh, somebody gets assaulted or somebody gets, uh, you know, um, basically uh, a guy goes around assaulting one person, then the second person, then the third person. He gets arrested, he goes to the court, he gets out on bail he gets assaults another person goes into the court and uh, you know comes out again with extra bond people sometimes you know because this is important for the immigrant community to understand sure. because they are going to be the part of the election process so i just want them to understand that how come that the guy who does that kind of thing goes in and then comes out without a you know, or, or is it that the system uh, is back, backlogged and uh, they just release him on the bail till the hearing takes place? Well, look, I, 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 I'd like to think that this, this role, this, you know, the system itself works. Um, to say, could it always be improved? Sure. Are there, you know, is it perfect? No, absolutely not. You know, I'm, and you brought up a very good point, Harpreet. You know, I'm first generation born in this country. My parents were born overseas. So I am proud to consider myself family of immigrants and, and an immigrant, uh, even though I consider this my country. I don't want to say the system is broke. Again, a person gets arrested and they get charged with a crime. Let's say you hit me, whether intentionally or whatever it is, um, and you get charged with a crime. A lot of factors are taken into consideration. The system is, you are, when you go see the judge, once the district attorney charges you with the, let's say, assault, it, it's, you take in several factors, the seriousness of the assault, the, the whether or not this person has ever done it before. Legally, bail, the only reason for bail is whether or not a person who's been charged with a crime is going to return to answer for and handle his criminal matter. So it's not supposed to be used as a punishment to you know, I'm going to hit someone with extra bail because they did this case. Now, obviously, when judges consider bail, they are going to take the seriousness of the case in, because obviously, if, you, if I assault you and you have a serious injury, the case is a serious matter, 
and I may not want to return on the case because I have much more serious consequences or penalties to be facing, as opposed to me and you, uh, I don't know, uh, get into a, a Just silly argument. Just regular slap, silly argument, slap. And, and, and then, yeah. obviously the case, there was no serious injury, mm -hmm. and, and you may turn around and say, you know what, we were both building silly. I may not, I don't want to see my friend, uh, you know, hurt and punished severely. So those are all taken into consideration, as well as whether or not, the, like, if I were to do it, have I ever did it before? Uh, was I under the influence of any uh, substances or alcohol or, you know, so all that is taken into consideration. Normally, on cases of first offense, whether it's on a misdemeanor charge, whatever it is, normally it's the right thing to do depending, again, depending on the facts and circumstances. If someone's never been in trouble before, they will be released without bail. Once you start getting to what you call, or we like to call repeat offenders or recidivists, I can guarantee you that the district attorney uh, recommends bail because, Harpreet, you know like I do, you cannot, the district attorney cannot set bail. They can request bail, but ultimately it's up to the judge. It's up to the judge. Right. And uh, sometime, okay, there is uh, another uh, scenario, let me put it out uh, this way, that uh, DA or assistant DA has the discretion about that, okay, requesting the judge that, okay, Harpreet is a threat to the society and I would like you to set up the bail at about 50000 or $100,000, but the judge looks at the fact, like you mentioned, you know, how it happened, what happened, okay? And then he says, no, okay, I will do it only for $5,000. Uh, do the DA or ADAs, they have uh, any discretion or they can request the judge to increase the bail and the judge will consider it uh, or it is just whatever the judge says at that time? Well, if, if the judge, we're talking about, let's say, when you're first, well, the first time you go in front of a judge is at the arraignment process, the DA will make their arguments why they're asking for, let's say, like you request a $50,000 bail. At that point, the defense attorney or whomever is representing the person who's charged with the crime then uh, ends up making their argument why there should be less bail or no bail and what's the reasons for it. At that point, the judge, and many times, especially in Queens County, um, will even ask their own questions of either side, whether or not they believe, or because they have facts or questions that are not answered. And many times, once the judge sets the bail, that's pretty much standard. Uh, and I mean that that will stay in place for that point. Once then the case progresses, if the case progresses and what the law says, there must be a change in circumstances. Uh, let's say he gets rearrested on something else in another county and the DA finds out about it, then the, the DA may ask, or let's say someone's in on bail and the, the, a witness recants or they find evidence to the contrary of what the people are like alibi witnesses. Then again, those are changing circumstances in which you can, either side can ask for an increase or obviously on the defendants or you know, the client's uh, perspective, they ask for a decrease in bail. Uh, we are about to go on a uh, break right now, but when I, we come back, I want you to uh, distinguish when, if I want to pick up out of five candidates about the DA, what should I look for before I cast my vote after we come back from the break? Welcome back to American Vision. So right where I left, how do I pick up out of those five, six, seven, eight candidates that which will be a better DA? Uh, what should I be looking into? To decide it. I have to tell you, first and foremost, Abreed, I, I want to stress, like you just said before we ended, um, the most important thing is to get out and vote. You know, as being former commissioner of the Board of Elections, get out there and vote. That's the best way you can make your voices heard. And uh, that's why having forums like this and, and sitting down and talking is so important. My biggest thing that I would tell anyone considering this, and this is one of the biggest races I can't stress it enough of the year going into, you know, 2020, the presidential, obviously. But this year, this is the biggest race statewide. I mean, because we're not talking Queens County. This is going to have effects throughout the entire New York State. Experience. Experience, experience, experience. And I'm not saying, poli you know, pol politi pol 
political experience or politician. I'm talking about real experience. On working on the floor. It's like if you are uh, going to have for, uh, going for a surgery, you look for the doctor who has maximum experience, right? You hit it right on the head. And I was actually going to, you took it right out of my mouth. There are, every politician runs for every office. This is the office unlike any other in the state and again in the nation. Every state or every county has their own district attorney. But you're a law enforcement officer here. So you do not have the time to come in day one and say, okay, I'm going to learn and I'm going to have a learning curve. I, you don't have that here. Or you change the position today, you have one position, tomorrow exactly. you will have different position because you are interpreting the law and implementing it. And this is a role that is ongoing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't stop. When I was a prosecutor, I worked on every holiday. When I, there was a homicide, I would get beeped. I went to crime scenes, whether it was Thanksgiving, whether it was you know, your New Year, whether it was whatever day it was, we were out there. And that's why crime doesn't stop and, and neither can the person you know, in charge of it prosecuting. Uh, so basi cases. basically, it's a job uh, where you become, or everybody else within the county, or anybody who comes to visit the county, God forbid something happens, that yeah. person or that thing becomes part of your family. You are out there, even if it is zero degree outside. There were pre <laughs> there was many times I could tell you that I was freezing because you know especially at nights you know this unfortunate incident happened at nighttime, and there was many nights I could tell you I was freezing, and with there with the police department in regards to whether it was a vehicular homicide or an actual murder, um, so yeah you're there nonstop and you have to also remember, you have two of the biggest airports in. The United States in Queens County. In Queens County, yep. So you, this is not a role for a politician. This is a role for a prosecutor. You cannot tell me that, and again, I, many of the people running for the seat, I've worked with in the council and in government, but they are not ready for this job. And the reason I say that is because you cannot just say, okay, I want to run for this position. This is not it. This is a position who the person who does it has to have done it, knows it, and be able to be there from day one and taking that role and run with it. And I, I was going to say, and I'm, uh, to, to pick up what you said before, for me, when you say a politician, and the reason I bring this up, Aubrey, because I heard there was an elected official, I don't want to mention names, but there was an elected official came out today and endorsed one of their cronies, political, you know, another polit politician. And the reason was when he was questioned about why endorse this person with no experience, they claimed that it was an administrative role and that they would have no problem, you know, getting into the role once if they were elected. Let me tell you, that could be not only farthest from the truth, but that is absolute biggest lie I've ever heard in my life. That's like saying a butcher is qualified to be a surgeon. That's how r ridiculous that statement is. Because the person is in politics, and that doesn't happen. There are thousands upon thousands of investigations going on every day from wiretaps that no one ever hears about, search warrants, uh, grand jury investigations, every, every case. When I was a prosecutor, you had many cases that you continue to investigate with detectives and so forth. Everything from, listen, very, very serious cases, drug cases, murder cases, to less serious. I'm not saying they're not, but, you know, drunk driving cases and assault cases. It's, it's interesting. And now you mentioned that wiretapping, uh, wiretapping and uh, um, other house search warrants that also you have to get a permission from the DA's office before you can wiretap anybody? Well, the DA's office is the one that drafts the documentation and then approaches the court, approaches the judge. The yeah, judge I mean, yeah, that the correct. DA's office is uh, responsible to set up the case. Absolutely. And go in front of the judge. Absolutely. And they're in charge of continuing 
and making sure that everything is done legally under these wiretaps, under these search warrants. You know, you just, the law enforcement, again, and I say law enforcement, NYPD, a lot of times they may execute these warrants and, and uh, uh, do a great job in being, you know, the boots on the ground with the, detect, uh, with the detectives and with the DA's office. But the prosecutors are the one that have to maintain the, the entire legality of it because you're going to do a huge investigation that's been going on for months, maybe sometimes a year or two, and then it's screwed up. And obviously, you have people that risking their lives, undercover officers, undercover detectives, undercover citizens that care and they're just being, you know, giving information confidentially. You can't screw that up. People's lives are at stake. And again, you want to make sure that you the serious criminals are brought to justice. And uh, with this new uh, changes coming up uh, regarding, you know, marijuana and other stuff, uh, uh, what, uh, in simple terms, uh, weed smoking, if I may call it. <laughs> uh, so with tho all those things coming up, I, I, I'm just trying to understand that how it will affect whosoever that new DA is going to be. Because, yeah, with the, uh, if you drink, yeah, they have the instruments you can find out. But if you smoke marijuana, correct, there's correct. nothing to check. There isn't. And, and it's an excellent point, Harpreet. Uh, you know, they, we basically are seeing a lot of change lately. Some of it, I believe, is good. Some of it, I'm, I'm not so convinced, is so good. Legalizing marijuana obviously has its uh, pros and cons, but a big con that a lot of people are not talking about. Actually, I have to take that back. The commissioner of the NYPD said in an interview uh, on TV a, maybe a month ago, the same issue that I had been saying all along is how do you protect the citizens from people that are smoking marijuana and getting behind the wheel of a car? you obviously at that point are using that vehicle as a weapon there's no doubt about yeah, it yeah literally and that's so that's why uh they they even talk about that if you drink do not drive because yeah. then whatever you're driving it becomes a weapon correct and it's not intentionally no one's saying you're doing yeah. it intentionally you're going to hit somebody but it's recklessly and that is there are you know sections of the law that you kill somebody you're being charged with murder or manslaughter because of you know what you've you you are driving under Correct. influence and when it comes to <clears throat> uh you know marijuana or whatever you want to call it there's so many different slangs for it but there is no way to test it like when like you point out you they have breathalyzers and and blood tests and your analysis of when a policeman pulls someone over of uh, exactly knowing based upon your height and weight and you know how much you drank uh, they could test it in the breathalyzer exam that they administer at various precincts. Unfortunately, with marijuana, you can't do that. You can give a blood test and you can give a urine test to say whether or not the person is under the influence because it's in their system, but nobody can tell when. So, But don't you have to get the permission of the person before you do that, take the blood? Exactly. Exactly. That's and, another issue, right? And exactly. And many, many people are not, you know, they refuse. And unless there's, you know, evidence that or the case is serious enough that the police department can contact the DA's And that's office. where the DA's role will exactly. come again, that how to determine that, okay, this guy needs, uh, again, going to the judge that, okay, Harpreet refused. Correct. But judge, we need you to give us the permission Correct. To force him to give us uh, a sample of urine or the blood, right? Right. And even then, the problem is going to be prosecuting uh, because how long has that been in the system? Has it been an hour? Has it been a day? Has it been three days? And so that also changes the legality of it. And I know because, like I said, being in the Queen's DA's office, firsthand we had that issue. You know, it's funny because um, we really don't have that much time left, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, back home when I was growing up, nobody really cared about it. It grew up, people used, and we were like, oh, well, you know, and we'll just uh, ignore. But uh, now here, after I came here, I found out about it. So it's, it's really funny. But uh, anyway, uh, before we run out of the time, I want you to just in about 30 seconds, 40 seconds, explain again to look 
what they should be looking for to vote for the DA. And uh, of course, voting is important. Yeah. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I, again, I can't stress enough. Experience, experience, experience. You have, of all the candidates, there is only one that I could tell you personally is has been in doing law enforcement in this role for the past 40 years. L you know, lived in Queens his whole life, been a prosecutor for 30 plus years, started as in the lowest office and worked his way up immediately into the major cases bureau, uh, was an executive, and then after that, instead of retiring, was elected to Supreme Court and prosecuted every serious major case in Queens County. There's no other person with that type of experience. That's all I'm, you should do, is make sure you read and you find out who has the experience to get the job done, because it's a serious race that's gonna affect, it's not just crime, it affects you know, your quality of life, it's gonna affect we, property we, owners. We just ran out of time. Uh, the gentleman will be here also on the show and we will have other content contenders also to become the DA. Till next time, good night and good luck.